My name is Drew. Hayden's going to jump in in just a little bit. We're going to talk very briefly uh, today uh, about our balance system and specifically how you guys can utilize it to maintain your balance and reduce falls. So to start, let's try to make it interactive. So those that are still standing, stay standing. Don't sit down yet. Those that are sitting, if you feel comfortable, by all means, let's try to stand up. And I'm going to ask everybody to try to keep your feet Place your feet as close together as possible, and let's try to maintain our balance while I go through the next slide. There'll be a couple challenges like this as we go through. So how often are people actually falling? Every year, 33% of people who are over the age of 65 are gonna actually have a fall occur. However, of those that fall, 5% are gonna actually end up with an actual fracture. So it's a relatively small amount. However, certainly an amount we would love to continue to decrease. All right, so those that made it, congratulations. Those that had to sit down, that's all right. If anybody has any questions about where they fall in the norms of maintaining their balance, if they want to check out our booth thereafter, we have some norms. And to see if you're at risk, you can certainly touch base with us. And or if you have any other questions, we'll be happy to answer them. All right, so go ahead and have a seat. You did enough work for right now. <laughs> so we're going to cover what is your balance system, what's it made up of, what are some factors that can lead to a fall, what are some things you guys should be thinking about immediately after a fall occurs, and then how do we decrease the risk of that fall within our home. And then finally, from my perspective, the most important as a PT, what can you do to create a plan that's going to reduce these falls from reoccurring? Okay, so your body's balance system is designed to maintain your body weight within your base of support. So keeping your body weight centered over your feet. Its components are made up of primarily the sensory system, which is your visual system, touch, also called your proprioception, and then your inner ear, which is also called your vestibular system, which helps us deal with uh, telling where our, our, our brain, where our head is in relation to gravity, as well as detecting accelerations. All that information then obviously gets processed by our brain in our central processing kind of center, and then gets spit back out to muscles, which we call motor control, to help us maintain our balance, make corrections. All right, so now let's do the next part of our wonderful test. So everybody back up. So you're gonna get your workout in even while you're listening to us today. So we're gonna assume the same position, feet close together, but now we're gonna close our eyes. So what are some age-related changes that often occur as we get older within our balance system? Well, our vision declines. Obviously with your eyes closed, your vision is declining significantly and this increases our chances of having a fall. All right, everybody gets to open because you have to stare back at me now as I continue talking. So we talked about proprioception or touch. That also increase, that also can degrade somewhere, primarily when somewhere. we have an increase in swelling, uh, especially in our lower legs, and that can lead to balance loss. All right, everybody that passed, have a seat. I got a couple more challenges. They're gonna get more difficult as we go. And then finally, our vestibular system. That's also going to decline as we age. Uh, and primarily, it's going to affect our ability to detect accelerations. So we talked about central processing and then ultimately what we call motor control. This is your brain telling your muscles what to do. So the graphic here is telling you, is telling uh, our muscles, our brain saying, come on muscle, I know you're there. Nope, it's just me, I'm fat. Not funny, you two, show yourself this instant. The muscle's hanging in there. So we're, as PTs, are always obviously trying to strengthen those muscles and have them show up. So as we age, obviously, they don't always listen the way we want to. What other factors are going to negatively affect our balance as we age? Memory loss is going to increase our risks of having fall. Decreased muscle strength and endurance, which Hayden's going to talk about in a little bit. And obviously, certain illnesses can also affect our ability to maintain our balance system. So when I'm seeing a patient as a fall, what are some of the factors that can increase the risks of these falls occurring? So intrinsic factors are issues that are occurring within the person. So these are age-related changes, like we just talked about, muscle weakness, loss of vision, as you guys experienced, 
and age-related diseases as well. So arthritis obviously is going to affect our chances of having falls. Extrinsic factors, which are part of the environments, are also going to part of the environment are going to also lead to falls. This could be medication issues and or the environment. So are we properly using our walkers, our canes? Uh, those can also lead to increased falls. So some wonderful numbers, because I am a math nerd, thanks to my father, the math teacher. The biggest risk for causing falls is muscle weakness, and then obviously having preceding falls. That's gonna also increase our chances of having falls. So this kind of gives uh, a nice breakdown. Our age, if we look at it, actually causes the least amount of change. So if you're doing your job, staying strong, age really does not play a signi as significant a role as overall weakness in falls. So extrinsic, like we were just talking about, there are same risks for every single age group. If you're on a medication that's gonna cause a reaction or have a side effect, it's gonna cause the same uh, level of dizziness and or fall risk across every age group. Uh, tripping or slipping hazards, everybody's got throw rugs that they could trip over. That's certainly something that's present for everybody. And then obviously clothing and or bags on the floor can also increase your chance of having the falls if they're present. So we talked about all these factors. What happens when I actually have a fall? It's important, I think, to kind of remember these, this kind of breakdown. So situationally, what were you doing right before the fall happened? Are you constantly tripping over the same throw rug? So what were your symptoms? Did you have any dizziness or unsteadiness prior to the fall? So this is something to think about and report back to your physician. History, are you having a significant increase in falls over the past month? That's certainly something also to think about. Location, like I was saying before, is it always happening in the same place? Is it happening when I'm crossing over a threshold? And then the time of day, is it happening at night? Is this a visual kind of issue? So those are all factors to think about that can uh, lead to, and something you should be discussing with your physician that lead to falls. So now we're gonna talk about how we can create a plan to reduce all of these wonderful falls. So exercise programs, which often include physical therapy, evaluations, and interventions, can be used to improve on those weaknesses. So Hayden, once again, is gonna touch base on standing balance and gait training, aerobic exercise basics to be uh, included, and then strength training. I also think it's important to review with your primary care doc uh, your medication dosages, make sure they're being um, monitored correctly, looking for any interactions. And then finally, home modifications. Are there any significant easy fixes like picking up those throw rugs or more significant changes like moving to downstairs for a master bathroom and or bedroom? And then finally, one of the easiest fixes, which Hayden and I will be happy to look at back at our booth when we're done, is are you using your assistive devices correctly? So I don't know how many people that I have seen already today that I would love to adjust their cane to make their life easier and reduce their fall risk. So be happy to look at how you're utilizing your walkers and canes uh, to address those falls. So moving forward onto PT's favorite realm, if exercise could be placed into a pill, it would be the most prescribed medication. Great news for us as PTs, probably why I picked the quote. So you show up to PT after having falls, what is typically something, uh, some things that parts is going to assess? So strength and flexibility, number one, will help us identify you know, areas of risk and areas for improvement. What other tips can I offer you like I've already uh, discussed with your daily routine? testing how you're walking, further balance kind of testing, and then strength building. And something else we have at Hearts that we're pretty proud of at the moment is our Balance Master. And it's a pretty fantastic tool, if I don't say so myself. It helps us simultaneously assess our visual, our vestibular, and that touch, that sensory system, and helps us measure responses uh, to those types of changes when uh, we challenge your balance system in a couple different manners. It's really neat in that I can control how uh, difficult I'm making the challenge very gradually, which helps me not only in testing patients, but obviously then in treating them. Uh, and it's also a great uh, tool that I use a lot in my evaluations to really identify is the patient having an issue purely in their vision, purely in their vestibular, purely in their sensory system, or is there a combination of both? And it really helps me design a plan that's gonna address specifically your deficits. All right, now I'm gonna hand things over to Hayden, but before I do, we're gonna make it a little tougher again, so everybody back up. 
tell Hayden to hurry up so he gets <laughs> up here quick. And we're gonna try to place one foot as close as you can in front of the other. And then hope Hayden gets up here and moves on to the next slide. All right, I'm here. You can uh, stand in a more comfortable position. Feel free. No, no, no. You can. You may sit and be comfortable. I uh, won't make you stand up anymore. Good morning. My name is Hayden McDevitt, one of our other physical therapists with Hearts Physical Therapy. I certainly appreciate you coming to listen to our talk this morning on balance. Um, everyone who comes to a talk like this, I assume, has either some concern for balance and falls or has noticed something in their everyday that has made them say, hey, it would be a good idea to uh, go and listen to a physical therapist talk about balance. Uh, Drew did mention about some of the components of an evaluation. Um, I would say, please don't come to see us after you've had the fall for the evaluation. You are here if you've noticed things when we've been standing in different positions that have made you say, wow, I'm surprised that's kind of hard. It's always better if we can be proactive with these things as opposed to reactive. If you found yourself already starting to walk with the wider base of support, and then it became a cane, and then it became a walker, or then it became, I don't want to go to that soccer game because I have to walk all the way across the grass. That's probably the time to actually get in and to get checked out by one of the physical therapists just to see what we could do to make it a little bit easier for yourself. How many here are from Lancaster County like I am? Okay, good, good number. So this analogy will kind of work for you. I find balance to be very complicated. Drew's a wizard with the vestibular system and that stuff. That's not my background. So I always try to put it into analogies and things that I think are a little bit easier to understand. Being from Lancaster County, things like turkey and mashed potatoes are pretty close to my heart. I think about balance as something like a good Thanksgiving dinner. The stuff that Drew talked about with proprioception and vestibular system, that's gonna be like your turkey, your mashed potatoes, and your stuffing. The stuff I'll talk about, like your flexibility and your strength, that's those side dishes, like green bean casserole or sweet potatoes. They're very, very important, but they kind of take a back seat. But if they're not there, everyone's thinking, wow, this isn't, uh, this isn't what I expected. And so when we work on balance, we also need to look at other things in that person. I agree with Drew. I've been watching everyone this morning, seeing canes too high, used in the wrong hand, walkers at the wrong height. We've gotten a chance to do kind of that research. That's always going to be the stuff that we're looking at when we see you and how we can maximize the muscular strength that you have and the flexibility that you have. On here, we're talking about strategies. And with balance, so much of it is what strategy does your body use to keep you upright against gravity? Now, the first strategy that we use, and I hope that you can kind of see me, it's called an ankle strategy. And an ankle strategy, think about if you're on a boat that's on a pretty calm water, you might just sway back and forth at the ankles. It doesn't take much. It's our body's most efficient system. It takes very little muscular work and it's just back and forth. If I turn to the side so you can see me better, it's just a little bit of my ankle doing this and that. Now, if that boat's in slightly choppier water, now we're talking about I'm using my hips, right? I'm leaning back and I'm leaning forward and I'm doing this to maintain my balance. How many times does that happen that you've slipped and you do something like this to kind of right your balance? That's our second strategy. It's not quite as efficient, but it's our second go-to. Now, as we age, I see a lot of people walking around where we start to get the bent knees and, and our, our posture is different, our hip position is different. So now our hip strategy is significantly reduced and we start to use stuff where we might have to take a step. So if you kind of lose your balance and you step to regain it. And so having adequate strength at those ankles and hips becomes really, really important. When we talk about strengthening, we're going to talk about all those muscles, the back of the leg, the front of the leg, the front of the shins. It's very important cardiovascular exercise as well, which is sometimes overlooked in a balance and fall population. The reason being, as we tire, we tend to be a little bit more prone to a fall. So the recommendations currently are that if you're doing a little bit lower intensity exercise, you're trying to get something in about five times a week. And that can be as simple as walking for up to a half hour. If you want to just do about three times a week, you can drop the time down to 20 minutes, but it has to be a little bit more vigorous. Again, just to get that cardiovascular system going, because I guarantee you, if you're huffing and puffing a little bit because you've been on your feet so much, your muscles are huffing and puffing too, and they're not going to be as good at keeping you stable. 
I hope everyone can see the graph here. This is a really good just example of what changes in our lifetime in terms of our strength. You'll see that we gain strength up to about age 30, and then at about age 30, we kind of hit a plateau. And so we have to work if we want to maintain that strength to age 50. So again, you can maintain from age 30 to 50 your strength. You're not going to really get much stronger. But then after 50, you see how it's unfortunately like a plane descending to an airport. We're coming down and we're going to lose every decade of life five to seven pounds of muscle. That becomes pretty important when we're talking about those big muscle groups keeping us nice and stable. One of the hallmarks of balance training is deciding if an assistive device is appropriate. Should the person be using a walker? Should they be using a cane? One of the first things that I see people do is we start to get real wide in how we're walking. We start to, rather than having our feet closer together, we take them wider apart. That's probably a case where we might want to add a cane in so you can keep this more natural walking pattern. When we start to put our legs out because of balance, that is a car that is getting very poor gas mileage. It's a very inefficient walking pattern. I would rather that you use the cane for a little bit, started to walk a little bit more the way we're designed to walk, and then use the cane just until we kind of treat the balance. Uh, I think a common misconception is that you go into physical therapy because of balance, we put you on a cane or a walker, and then that's the long-term plan. That's never the long-term plan unless it has to be done to keep you stable. Most times, we teach you the other strategies at the ankle, the hip, and the stepping strategy so that you don't have to use that. We tend to try to make the task go from easy to progressively more difficult. So back at our stand uh, 134, we do have a piece of foam there, which kind of simulates walking across uneven surfaces. And you can see how different it feels and how much it challenges those strategies. So we'll do that in the office. So we'll have you walk with the cane over foam, stepping over objects. We're always trying to simulate what you experience out in the real world. We're trying to simulate at that clinic to train you appropriately. We developed a program about 10 years ago called a medically adapted gym. Everyone knows they're supposed to exercise. I find that most people don't know how they specifically are meant to exercise. Not every person can afford a personal trainer three times a week at however much a visit. So we developed a program where you come in, you work with an exercise physiologist, it's a month to month program, and we tailor a strengthening and balance program to your individual needs. Again, back to that Thanksgiving example, even if we have a lot of the same things, turkey, mashed potato, green bean casserole, some are going to be better than others. Every person who comes into our clinic is going to be a little different in terms of their vestibular system, their proprioception, their strength around the ankles. So we have to design a program to be specific to you. I love what I do as a physical therapist. Obviously, that's why I got into it. I love where I work. Again local boy born and raised our practice is a local practice we've grown the right way from the ground up we now have four offices within the county to uh, serve our customer base if, i think it's important to note this sometimes gets lost it's your decision where you go for physical therapy please do your research most people if they're going out to dinner on friday night start talking about that on tuesday or something and deciding and they're asking hey have you been in that new place over on fruitful pipe or those things do that with your physical therapist and with your health care in general. Please ask around, get recommendations from friends who've been there or been through balance or a knee injury, and get a sense of where you're going to get the best care for your money. Please don't pick a place just because it's a half mile down the road from you or because you were told, oh, I guess just go there or I've seen the sign. Please research your physical therapist as much as you would any of the doctors who are participating in your health care because it's just as important. This kind of speaks just back to what I said about this is kind of the time to get in and get stuff taken care of. If you've noticed things uh, in your balance that are changing or some strength deficits that you've noticed, please come and talk to Drew and I. We'll be here for you know, another hour and a half or so and talk to your doctor. I think if you walk into your family physician and said, hey, I'd really like to go see a physical therapist. I'm concerned about my balance. I think after they fall on the floor and they get back up onto their wheelie chair, they're going to be so pleased that you came over and that you actually want to be proactive in your health care for that. They'd much rather that than when it was after you've had a fall or after you've been going down we, we try to make ourselves very accessible, whether that's here, our information's on there. I love it when people stop into one of our offices and want to see how we treat, or you know, they want to email or call us and just kind of see what it is that we can do. I welcome any questions from you, uh, whether that's here now or whether that's over at our booth, or give us a call or shoot an email. We'd be happy to help in any way that we can. Yes.
Here, we'll give you this. I'm a fan of parts therapy. I have been there three different occasions. 